Coach Andersy, Kent State Wrestling Talk. We've got episode number four, season one. How are you doing, Coach Andersy? Doing great. How about you, Zeb? Hey, hanging in there. Today was a uh, work day at school. Got to take my sons in with me. Defensive duels yesterday. OEC stuff on uh, Jesus Pete Saturday. So we got a lot of stuff going on, Coach. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, you guys had a dual meet yesterday with Northern Illinois, and it was a 5 5 split, correct? That is correct. They got you on bonus points at 165. I saw uh, Enrique got majored by Olenek. What other ones did you guys get bonus up at? 184. No, 174. Michael Fair. Okay. And then uh, Aaron Aaron um, Schaefer gave it 157. 57. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. Something like that. You know, you and I were talking earlier. Uh, it's wild because college dual meets, I think I saw a duel where Illinois beat or Illinois got beat by Pitt. It was eight matches to two, but I think most of the matches were close and it looks like a blowout. And that's how a lot that's, that's that kind of ebb and flow of, of college, uh, wrestling. I think the only team that does it, you know, obviously where it'll be eight to two and it's not close. is like a Penn state, right? I mean, <laughs> the Iowa's of the eighties, Iowa in the eighties, yeah. late seventies yeah. and eighties. We're talking about all time. Great teams though. Right. Yeah. But even in the Mac, you could wrestle, like for example, we could wrestle. I'll use a rider or maybe even Lockheed. And they got a really good team. We could go in there and the way the, the matchups are, we could lose, we could wrestle in, in 10 overtime matches, lose them all. They could win 30, nothing from the view of it. It looks like a blowout, but really it was a, heavily contested competition at all weight class. It could be a great duel, but you, you know, you're on the short end of the stick 10 times. And that doesn't usually happen, but it could happen. And it could look horrible. And really it was just a great duel. I don't know if ours was a, considered a great duel, to be honest with you. Um, there were a lot of good matches. I think there were two opportunities where we were, where we were, we were really close to getting majors in, in uh, Cody Kamara and Jake Ferry. They both missed a major by two points, which would have made it look like 17, 18, but on the same end of it, you know, we still would have, we still would have lost. Um, it, it, it wouldn't have mattered. Lost coach here briefly. Hopefully we can get him back and pop right back into this. Uh, he is on his phone. So sometimes, you know, they'll drop service just like a call. So just talking about the Northern Illinois duel, see if we can get him to pop back in and uh get rolling here back into it but yesterday they lost a uh, 1815 duel to northern illinois and coach just briefly talking about the difference between uh i'm so, back I'm yeah back. I, I got you we're listen i just kept rolling <laughs> talking about you summarizing a five five split and uh <laughs> how we can get you back on you know and it's just but you're right it's the ebb and flow of college wrestling yep and uh, was that your guys's first duel of the year no, we wrestled Ohio State uh, the weekend before. Um, we lost to them. I, I want to say it was twenty. I want to say twenty nine to to nine, but I don't 29, know. Twenty nine twelve, I think. Or no, no twenty nine nine. You're right. You're right. Yeah, twenty nine. Um, once again, you know, you're talking about the four, the the third best team in the country. I, I don't consider a a twenty nine nine a win at any measure, but our guys wrestled really hard, um, and they look every bit of the the third ranked team in the country. So ultimately. You know, we had two we had two matches where we got victories, um, and, and from there we lost everything else. But we wrestled hard, and it was, it was a great environment. It was the first time we've ever wrestled at the uh, um, Cavalli Cavalli Center, which is an amazing facility. I know it's not a wrestling owned facility, but you know the way State's doing it, man. They 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 got they got other sports there that that kind of go along with what they do. In the wintertime, it's their it's their facility for the most part. Teams are practicing in it, I assume, but it's that's their facility. <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing okay. facility. So hold on. I get your point. They share the facility with volleyball. I get that. But if we're talking about the state-of-the-art best facility in the country, practice room attached to competition venue, Ohio State's a slam dunk. There's no there's no comparison. I, I haven't been to any there's, how, there's not a comparison. I know that the Friedman Center at Cornell would probably be the closest thing, is my guess, because they practice and do a lot of their competing at Cornell. Yep. 
in their room, right? Yeah, it's much different setup though. The practice but room you, becomes the you, match site. And you it's you get my point though. Yeah, we're talking about a place where they have the room and the competition yeah. venue. The closest thing to that is Cornell, and there, and there's really Michigan? no compare. Michigan, no, no, that is just there. That is a standalone. Bana is a standalone. It is not. I, I, what's that? Standalone practice facility. The pra It's a standalone practice facility. Okay. Ohio State's room is what's it? An yeah. owl? It's an owl, isn't it? No, it's a, it's a it's a long room. It's no, six no, no, mats no, but deep. I'm saying the wrestling room is an owl at the end of the building to the oh, right. Maybe it, it's not yeah, just one long building, right? I don't know. I went up. My thing is, I got the building. I went up an elevator. I was in the wrestling room. I knew it, it was just. It's an amazing What's facility. Best, it's all. It's I know. Best, but hold on, Ohio State's got the best facility in the world. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. If you want to say what it's a, you would know. You would know. To attached to. I mean, I've only been on the outside of it. But all the okay. videos I've seen of it, I mean, you know, because the state track meet was right next to it. Now I went and checked okay. it out and did a walk around, but it's unbelievable. But to go there and for you guys to wrestle, uh, 165, they held Karshala out. Karshala made your decision, Mungia, at the Vegas, which we'll get to next. But yep. he majored your guy, and then they held him out. But he did. Enrique is just so dangerous. They held Enrique out. Yeah, they, they made like I said, they had another guy. I don't know why they didn't bump him up. And you know, I, I they, they, I'm sure they had their reasons. I personally believe in today's time there should never ever be a forfeit because you're allowed to wrestle freshmen in five competitions. I don't know why Ohio State doesn't have another. 50, well, actually, they do have a 65 pounder. He was at the Cleveland State. He um, beat Karshala at the St. Ed's guy. Yes, Tucker. yes, yep. But at some point, you would think that you know, my I've always had a goal as a head coach, never to have to forfeit, you know, pe people are come, fans are coming there um, and they want to see 10 matches. It's a 10, it's a dual meet. It isn't the longest thing in the world. If you're forfeiting as a coach, why are you forfeiting? I know I always say it as guys, I would have proceed. I, I would have liked to see them wrestle someone at 165 at the end of the day. They didn't, that's their strategy, whatever. I just know with the new rules, the way they are that every freshman can wrestle up to five competitions and still red shirt that you shouldn't forfeit a match. My thing is there's people that paid a lot of money for those tickets and for those, those seats to have to only, you know, to only be able to watch nine matches. And I think that's a, a shortage in wrestling and we shouldn't do that to our wrestling fans. My opinion. That's all. So you actually only won one match. They forfeited to you. Uh, you won that's at 57 against Ohio state. They forfeited to Enrique Munguia who there, who Carson Karshala actually made your decision at the Vegas. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's dangerous, but he, I know he tweaked, Karshala's knee, so yep. I get I get no Karshala. I think you and Karshala. I both get no Karshala. We yep. get no Karshala, like because yep. he's like he's, he's hurt. got he's dinged injured. up. He's, he's yep. dinged up, and yep. he's a thoroughbred. And I think you got to keep that guy at low matches anyway. Yep, I agree with that. And he's he's probably the second best guy in their team on paper, right? I mean, yeah, Sa it's Sasso, Sasso him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they got some pretty good guy. Yeah, Sasso. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think their team's just really good, and I just yeah, I like Ohio State, and they're solid in every weight they're class. They're just solid and they're deep, and that's what they should be. Yep, they should be. They <laughs> exactly. Should be, they should be. They should be challenging for a national title next year, and uh, I don't think there's an excuse for that. Even if uh, even if one guy gets hurt or two guys get hurt, I mean, they're really yep. good. So, uh, okay, Vegas. And they, guar they guaranteed us some money too, so we made a little money on the on on the trip there too, which is well, always for you. Nice. And the Penn State did that for you two years ago, didn't they? They did. We're, we're not wrestled Penn State, and they pay, and the amount they're paying, it's almost like football and basketball. It's more than what it's costing you to go there and to, to compete. And at the end of the day, it helps helps fund some of our program, which we do need. We need help with that. Okay, so you guys had Vegas before that. You had three guys that made it to the final round. The, the blood round in Vegas is on day one. Usually it isn't. This is the first year they did it. Okay, but the fact I'm stating is this year, the blood yep. round, round of 12, yep. was on the final round of the evening. Uh, I'd say Friday evening, right? Yep, yep. And it was which some of our guys' done. Was some of our guys' fifth match of the day, which is a lot of matches in one day. It was all three of their fifth, five, fifth match of the day. And our, our uh, 57 pounder made it to the round prior to that. So we had four round guys that were, yeah, the round of 16. So, you know, not what you want, but if you look at all three guys that were wrestling in the round to be all to, round to be a, a placer there. First of all, if you if you place at Vegas, you're essentially I don't want to say you're a shoo-in for the 
the national tournament, but essentially you're putting your name up there that people better better be aware of when they're when they start rankings and all that stuff. But if you look at Jake Ferry, he lost to the I want to say that the Michigan guy, which which is a top fifteen guy. I mean, he lost to the guy who I want to say took second at the tournament. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, he lost to two really kids, the Purdue guy and the Michigan guy, both ranked. The Purdue guys ranked in the top ten. The Michigan guys ranked in the top fifteen. He lost just the way the the seedings went and upsets. He ended up wrestling that way. Um, Cody Kamara wrestled. Uh, he's the one blank guy. He wrestled. He lost to the Michigan guy as well, who's a top twenty five guy, um, and he lost to the guy from OU, which he goes back and forth with. They're, they're, he's two he's and one. He's got to win against him this year too, don't he? You got, you got to win, so they'll get to go one more time, and ultimately that match will be for the the higher seed at the MAC tournament. Right now, the OU guy's second or third. Um, the guy number one guy is uh, the Ryder guy. Okay, so you know, and, and then McGear wrestled the Ohio State guy, which he lost to place. Yeah, uh, and he got stuck. So he should have been wrestling the South Dakota State guy, but the South Dakota State guy pinned, pinned like pinned Karshala. Yep. In a crazy position, right? In a big crazy one. position. Crazy position. Pinned him. That, stepped over. Pinned him. That guy's a pinner. That guy's what that, that guy guy's does. a pinner. But Enrique's got a, a, a absolute shot against that guy. He, it would be a, it would be a crazy. It was like my, our match. I went over there to watch it. Something and these two guys, these guys, this is Enrique Russell. This is gonna be a crazy semi or a, a crazy match to place. Ultimately, he upset the you know the the number one seed of the tournament, and that's why he, that's why the number one seed dropped on Enrique. Yes. So then that guy gets tech ball. The guy wins in the semis and yep. the South Dakota state guy who's like super dangerous. He could pin Enrique. You know that you already know that could yep. just go either way. Um, yep. But he, uh, he got technical falls in the finals by the Cornell guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think it's rumors. Um, I think so. Yep. Uh, anyhow, you guys don't have a place in Vegas for the first time in a while. And, um, you know, going into then the next thing was Ohio State, then the Northern Illinois, and we, we've recapped all that stuff. But what do you say to the guys from competition to competition to competition? How does the training cycle break down, and what do you do, Jim, to keep guys to try and get to where you're going to have a big – we have a big alumni event coming up on Friday, yeah. uh, December 23rd, against uh, the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. How do you get guys ready for that and put a good showing on for your alumni coming up who are going to be in person? Well, the, the first thing that I talked about was what we're doing today probably isn't going to show because, you know, we practice today. It, we're, we're, we're moving forward. What we do today probably isn't going to show up for Edinburgh. It's probably going to show up like if you start being consistent with your training and get better at things, it'll probably show up in your wrestling towards the Virginia Duels type time period. If you really look at our schedule and where we're at, the stuff we're trying to improve on, it's really hard to make major improvements in a short period of time. Yes, there's things that, you know, when you look at a match and say, all right, you know, my, my biggest issue was with, with just not wrestling. I, Aaron Ferguson made some just like junior high mistakes. We call them junior high mistakes. Things was that, Ferguson the guy who was up big against the Columbia guy and got pinned yes. in Vegas? Yes. First dual meet ever. First first dual meet for us. First uh, match dual meet that he's wrestled since high school. Um, so, it, like I said, he was a little nervous. It was We wrestled in the field house, which was different. So, and he just, he made mistakes that you could look on a video and say, like why? Like what are you thinking there? And he, he's like, yeah, I, I didn't. I, I made a mistake. I mean, like three of them, which essentially, I don't know if those three would have. He would have won the match, but he wouldn't have got major decision. One of them was he tried stepping over on a guy at a half and got put to his back. Like you can't do that in college. It's just you have a half and you got to fight the half. You can't try to step over something. You know that that was the first one. So you know, will that affect how he, he's a guy that you make those adjustments in any match? He's going to get better. Most of the stuff we're talking about, like. If the matches we lost, we got ridden out pretty bad by, by the Northern Illinois guys. Um, when you get ridden out, it's something you have to make a conscious effort to get better at. You're getting away now. I would assume that all three guys or all five guys that rode us out, they probably they're, they're good in those positions, and we're not. So that may be a situation where maybe we don't take neutral, or we take neutral and set it down. You know, it, it's different for everybody. I personally believe that getting away is just an attitude. It's just all right. This guy is not going to hold me down. I'm going to figure out how to get away. I was good at getting away. So that's my mindset on things. I could tell you in matches when I wrestled, it was like, yeah, I'll get away when I want, but you know, maybe I need a little break or maybe I'm maybe where the scores at. I'm going to be real, real particular about how I'm going to do it. But I always got away. I don't think I've ever gotten ridden in college. So it's different for me. It's hard to sometimes relate where I, I mainly put it as, all right, you work on it. You'll get better at it. And no one will hold you down. That's it's, 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 it's simple. 
sometimes it isn't always that simple. Um, end of the day, the guys who lost, need to do, we need to work on getting away. Does that mean that on Friday they're all of a sudden going to be able to get away because we're really focused on, all right, we had guys that, you know, guys that maybe weren't better than them but were tougher on top and held them. How's that going to How's that going to translate in our three days of practices before we wrestle on Friday? I think long term, you know, if you look at where we were at last year and how we finished the match term, we made some really, really good strides with the guys we had. We have all those same guys back this year, except for what we added two different ones. How much of what we're teaching now is going to affect how they're wrestling in March for the, the competition? That's that's our ultimate goal. I think that I've talked to a lot of Mac coaches with until we get through some of this COVID guys getting six years. And, and all these guys that are back, I think that it's our goal to get guys to the, the, the national tournament and try to figure out a way to get one or two of them to place. And that, that's our goal, ultimately. If we're trying to have really good teams right now, when you have Big Ten teams that are keeping guys for a, a sixth year, we're, we're, at the, we're at a major disadvantage right now. So hopefully, as COVID year ends and, and got, we aren't dealing with six-year guys, we'll be able to get back to as a conference where we're at four or five, six years ago. Because we're not, as a conference, we're not anywhere close to where we were at in years past. I blame it on um, having a lot of really good kids that are still getting their, their fifth and sixth year and they're using them. And all the big schools, they're staying at these big schools. So there's more guys at the bigger programs that are sticking around longer, which makes it harder for us. That's that's what I'm blaming on. I don't know if that's what it is. We'll know in, in, in I think we have next year as a COVID year. Then at that point, everyone will be through. And we'll be able to find out where we are as a conference. So, you know, you guys are, are, are gearing up for the big event on Friday. Obviously, yep. the, the tough result against Northern Illinois in a 5-5 split comes down to bonus points. Uh, it's actually the same thing Iowa did to Iowa State. They split, but the bonus points went Iowa's way. Um, you guys got, you know, you're going to have a, have to put a good showing on. Coach Ron Gray, legendary Ron Gray. Uh, multiple multiple time NCAA champion for Iowa State. He will be in the house. Any of his former wrestlers will be there, and you guys are wrestling the Fighting Scots. What do you hope to get out of this event besides a win? Well, I think you know you're always trying to get alumni back engaged in your program. Um, you know, years ago when there was less information, no internet, we used to have huge crowds. We used to get a lot of alumni people back. You know, nowadays there's so many different avenues to to fill people's entertainment. I'm hoping to get a lot of alumni re reunited with, with our program so we can get better crowds than we've had in the past. So people are more aware of it. So, you know, our crowdfunding campaign can do better um, just to get more people back involved in our program. Anytime you, you're trying to build a program, you need support from alumni, um, people in the community. This is going to be a huge event for us. Some people say it's an amazing time to do it because everyone has a day off of work most likely. And, and there's nothing going on. It's the, the 23rd. Some people are like, man, why'd you do it during that time period? Because, you know, because they're traveling for the holidays. At the end of the day, there's never going to be a perfect date to do it for everybody. This was something we picked just because we felt that a lot of people will be able to get there because they don't have work. A lot of, a lot of our alumni are teachers, like yourself. You'll have Friday off. You'll be able to get there. Um, maybe on a normal day, you wouldn't be able to because you got, you know, you're teaching and you have something the next day. There's no perfect date. We picked it because it looked like a good match to, to do it at. And it really fit. We have, you know, we only have like two other or three other dual meets. One of them is senior day. One of them is the beauty and the beast. And the next one, it's a, it's a Friday night. And coach Gray was trying to stay away from nights. He wanted a day match. <laughs> he doesn't stay it's up late. Five I guess. It's it, a five, is it a five o'clock or a three o'clock? I forget. It's a five o'clock match. Five o'clock. Right. His thing okay. is he goes, I want to be in bed. I want to be at my house by, by eight o'clock and sleeping by eight 30, Jim. And I'm like, okay, we'll figure out how to do that. So we're having it at five o'clock. He lives three miles from, from the match after the, the everything's over, he'll go home and he'll be in bed by eight o'clock. That was his goal. Perfect. So <laughs> who, okay. So Nick Magistrelli started this thing. I got Jared Alfer, Joe Glavin, Mark Wentz, Jim Anderson. I do not know who the last person's number is. It's a three, three Oh number. I don't know who's in this conversation. Maybe do a quick point. Who is the sixth? Who is the, uh, yeah. Sixth person. Who's the sixth? Let person? me see here. I'll figure it out right now. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Is it Brent Thompson? It must be Brent Thompson. That's what, oh, my only guess. I don't know who it Nick, is. Nick, Jared, Zeb, Mark, Brent. I don't have the four. It's Brent. It's Brent. it's Brent Thompson. It's Brent Thompson. Okay, Brent Thompson. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Okay. And then I, I made a snide remark that I don't like any of you guys. But uh, <laughs> listen, 
I just real quick before you know we're gonna I want to talk about how the fundraising went, but we got two heavy hitters in there. Well, three. Wow, there's a lot of heavy hitters in there. Wentz is a TV guy. What do you call it? It's got his own uh, nonprofit. Mark Sean Wentz has got the Warrior Saber. Uh, Magistrelli sells uh, ovens or something. Uh, ovens to people all over the world. He's like he, he's, yeah, he's got the number one product for cookie cookie ovens. Makes makes more money than all of us put together. Yeah. Then you got Joe Brent Glavin. Tom- Joe Glavin. Jo- Joe Glavin makes even more money than him. And then you got Brent Thompson, who's a, a partner at the. You know, he's a he's a tax guy and he's a partner. I saw Magistrelli yesterday. Magistrelli <laughs> looks twenty eight years old. Had hair product in. Was dressed in about eight hundred dollars worth of clothing. You know, I mean, that's worth more than my whole uh, wardrobe. You know, and it's not like I'm a snazzy dresser, but. This guy looks, he's in amazing shape. Apparently he's got a fat checkbook. When are we going to start to get these guys to donate money? And what's it going to take to get Nick Magistrelli to, to, to open the checkbook and Joe Glavin and Brent Thompson? What do we got to do to get those guys to start doing so we get these matching funds and then we got these guys being the whales, bringing in the big money? What do we got to do, Big Jim? My philosophy is this, is that you, when kids graduate, you know, most of them aren't married. They don't have kids. You get them right after that. You get them used to giving. So from the time they graduate until the time they have families, you're getting used to giving. Whatever that is, if it's $25 a year, if it's $100 a year, you get them used to giving. At some point, when you come from Kent State, we have a lot of teachers, a lot of um, you know, middle class people. At some point, they all of a sudden, they have kids, and there's, now they're trying to afford kids stuff, and they're planning for college, and they're doing all this stuff. You kind of back off for about an 18-year period. And then when they get older, you start hitting them up. So I think his, how old is Nick's youngest? Man, uh, Shelley's. I want to say, first off, I, he had a son wrestling yesterday. Yeah. And I said, you got to get this kid can't wrestle anymore. I go, this kid's a model. Just moving <laughs> to New York City or LA, this guy can't be wrestling anymore. I mean, the kid looks like a model. Like literally, this kid looks like a model. He looks like a person that should be <laughs> modeling sunglasses or something i don't know whatever kids model i mean i was like get this guy very bougie bougie family over there we'll call him bougie bougie get this guy he doesn't need to be wrestling nick nick and then he gave me the whole rundown and we had a good time but (laughs) but i was like yeah the kid needs to not wrestle he's gonna get a mangled face his nose will look like jim's his ears will look like mine i don't want that but but he was there he was talking about it and then, you know, he, I didn't want him, you know, I, I don't make him wrestle. And I like that about Nick. And I believe that about Nick as well. So anyhow, Magistrelli, we got to get this guy. This guy's got to donate more. I always send you the videos when I drive by his house. And yeah. when's Nick going to start donating more? Nick's got one of those driveways that you got to get past a gate to get in, don't you? It's like a uh, gated. No, <laughs> it's just got like a lot of trees in front of it. It's like okay. you can't really see the house, so. But yeah, I, I like getting after Nick. Nick's awesome. He's a great guy. They don't make him better than Nick. Um, yeah. He told me a story yesterday. I didn't know that the guy, he wrestled the Chattanooga guy at a NCAA tournament. And then Nick, because Nick made the round of 12. Yep. And he lost to the guy who got mixered, uh, the Lembrick guy from Oklahoma. The guy who was beating Rob Rohn by yep. 12 points or whatever and got mixed to his back and fitting yep. the Oklahoma guy. I that wrestled was in the that finals. Guy. Yes, that was in the NCAA finals. Year. Yes, the next year that was in the fun. Yep. I wrestled that guy when that guy Lembrick. I wrestled him the year before when he was at Chattanooga and lost to him three to two. Okay, it was bizarre. And then, hey, did you know I wrestled a serial killer? Uh, you you sent me that information <laughs> from Chattanooga. <laughs> you, you want to talk about? It? Go for it, man. Uh, listen to me. No, I don't want it. It's awful. And just so everyone's straight here, the guy that. Zeb is referring to is an actual serial killer that's now in jail, right? Death row. The guy's in the guy got yes. His <laughs> name is David Tyner. And I brought it up to an Oklahoma guy at the Iron Man. He goes, Oh, that guy's a bad guy. I go, No, literally, yes, he's a bad guy. <laughs> um, and and I, I I we're not laughing about murder. That's not what we're no. laughing about. That's no. not it. We're laughing that first off, this guy was a bad, he was a really bad guy. In the match, I sent you the match, I think. And you're coaching. It was at the Citadel. And this guy and I are basically fist fighting. And he just, like, was just, we we're just beating each other up. And he was a uh, he was a true freshman. He won the Southern Conference. So he qualified mm-hmm. for the NCAA tournament. I think he did probably 
uh, maybe a year at a uh, uh, Chattanooga. And then I think he went to the Marines. And then obviously his crime is horrific. Um, yeah. He he killed two pregnant women. And I believe like this guy who was like a pimp drug dealer. And then there was another other another person that he killed. He killed six people. And I believe burned them down inside the building. Man, this oh. man, this this show goes off in who knows what but direction, Jim, doesn't it? But yeah, but Jim, that's <laughs> a real, I rust I wrestled for Kent State and I wrestled that guy. Yeah, yes, that you is did. what is insane about it. So I sent it to people and I was like, Yeah, I wrestled this guy, and they're like, No way. I go, and then and I have the video, and I'm like, No, I wrestled this guy, and um it was wild because I think can't remember who found it. It was like, oh, Zap Miller versus David Tyner. And I put the video on what, during uh, COVID because, you know, he got all this time, right? We had a, an inordinate yeah. amount of time. And I started going through VA justice and I wrestled that guy. And it was like insane to think. And then um, somebody sent me a link. Hey, did you wrestle this guy? At one, and this is like 10 years or eight, six years ago, whenever it was. And um, yeah, man, he, he killed, he actually killed a lady who was like uh, on one of those HBO uh, shows about the, uh, the bunny ranch. That was one of the ladies that this guy murdered. I mean, it's, it's wild to think about it when you're around people that are like that, but yeah, hold on at Kent state university. I would wrestling 197 Russell David Tyner to do and beat him. There you go. And I hear Brent Thompson in the background. Hey, this guy's trying to fight us. I'm like, well, it's probably cause the guy was a really bad person. Yeah. Yep. That wild, happens. wild. I, 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 yeah, I couldn't even like, believe it like gives you chills to think about it because it's like this guy's a really bad guy and i knew that at the time but you know some people in wrestling change they're different as a person when they wrestle compared to out in society when they're walking around i i saw your interview with tommy rollins couldn't find a better human in this world can you yeah you, you can't yeah exactly that's a great point yeah um a guy who wrestles hard yesterday. would probably kick the tar out of you but out of whistles, you know, out of in between whistles, one of the best humans you'd ever want to meet. He was, he was, he was leaving the tournament to go to church. Yeah. No, mass. yeah. He, he could, I, we couldn't talk longer. Had to go to mass. Yes. And then I saw Joe Heskett as well. And we I, saw, I ran into Joe, talked to Joe for about uh, 20 minutes at the Ironman. Joe Heskett is recovering really well. Uh, his speech was really good when I was talking to him. Um, and it was just awesome to talk to him. And we held, like you're saying, it's, you can hold a, a full conversation with Joe. I know yep. it's been a long road to recovery for Joe Haskett. And it's just like, it's awesome to see a guy like that. He's a Northeast Ohio guy. He's a Walsh guy, an Akron guy. So it's awesome to see, just like, those are the people we're talking about though. Like yep. we got those, we got those guys, those guys are over on that end of the spectrum. And we got a guy who's killed six people, right? It's, it's, and it's the same community. It's wild, Me man. It just blows my mind. So me and Joe, me and Joe became close about 10 years ago. Um, we had some similar things going on with, with each other. And we, we did a lot of communicating back and forth through email, through text. We talked probably once every 10 days about just different stuff, see how each other were doing. You know, then when I found out what happened to him, I, I was trying to get in touch with them, did some things. I thought he was, I thought that he was permanently not going to be able to do anything ever again. So when I saw him, he came up and grabbed me and I looked around and I'm like, I, I, I'm like, is this Joe Heskett? It doesn't like, it can't be Joe Heskett. He's, he's in a home and it was Joe Heskett. So it was like, wow. And some tears that came to my eyes. I'm like, man, what you're doing, looks like you're doing great. And then we talked and like I said, he's still struggling. I think just getting some words out, but it, yes. like, he knows it. Yes. Yeah. He knew exactly like different things, but he just couldn't get out. And I helped him as much as I could. Um, my conversation and, with it was great. Like, good, I, yeah. like my conversation, I, I was awesome. He and, was. Uh, he's got a good sense of humor. I mean, yep. He, yep. It's, it's awesome. Here, uh, you know what? His son was wrestling is what I saw and what got Tommy, you know, his son. Now Joey is involved with Watterson and Eagle Club down there. Um, and, I, you know, the, the guy, what the guy's been through is amazing. His daughter got, uh, is, is going to Akron to play soccer. Oh, she okay. Yes, Great. his oldest daughter goes to Olin Tangy High, I believe, is what he said, and um, she will be on University of Akron's team. She's a senior this year. At okay, Olin, I want to say it was Olin Tangy. Um, I could be wrong there, but they live in like the old. I, I think Jaggers' kids go to that same school system in Olin Tangy. Um, okay, which is like the 
just on the border of the Delaware. And that's one of those places that is it's exploded. Yeah, they've they got like four Berlin. Schools. They've got they've got all these different schools. Um, uh, Liberty, all these other yeah. schools, and they're you know some of them only 10, 5, 10 years old. Berlin's brand new. I was there last year. It's a beautiful yeah. school. So yeah, I mean, it's just great to see a guy like that getting back up on his feet, holding a conversation, articulating yeah. things. And like you said, I think there's obviously things, but from what Joe Heskett's been through to be where he is now, it's, it's incredible. And, and you love to see it, man. I love to see it. It's awesome. And I'm, I'm glad Tommy Rollins is, you know, helping out with his son and it's just awesome to see. It's what's great about the sport, but to, to the point, we got a pretty big spectrum of people in the, in the sport yeah. of wrestling. And, and it's funny wild. after the, after the Tommy Rollins video, there was an Alan Freed video. Like it's the way they came through it. And, you know, Alan Freed, I've known him since I was, since I, like, since he started wrestling, he wrestled and I was already on the team. And then, you know, he, he was a lawyer. He talked about how he quit. Alan quit Freed's brilliant. Alan Freed yeah. is brilliant. Alan Freed's IQ hippie. is probably in the 200s. Um, yeah. His intelligence quotient is off the chart, most likely. And um, the guy, yeah, but once again, the guy, we've got these great minds. And Alan is just, like you said, he's just, he's a different guy, but yeah. so super highly intelligent. But he, and, his, his conversation was mainly about how being it, it was a, it was a youth wrestling tournament. It was at and how it's just therapeutical to him, and how it's great, how like it's being great. around wrestling people in the wrestling community just makes you feel good about everything that you know that you've been involved in your whole life. So, and he was right on with that because I can think of like sometimes I'll just go to matches and just sit there and talk to people and really you know not really watching the wrestling just to go to see the the people at the tournament. So it's it's he's actually he was hundred percent on, especially yeah. in Northeast Ohio. You can't not a better place in the in the world in my opinion to. To, to be able to go to a wrestling and people are knowledgeable about the sport. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Northeast Ohio and I'm from Northwest Ohio and I'm changed yep. over now. I've been here longer than I was there. Um, so yeah, I'm 43 moved here when I was 19, went back for a cup of coffee for just under a year. And now I told um, you not to do it. Too. Remember I told you not to do it. Jim, Jim, <laughs> you're always right. Okay. <laughs> tell, tell me how the fundraising went. With the matching, the giving day, the matching of funds, how did Kent State Wrestling do compared to the past? I don't really want to compare to other teams. I'd like to talk about and focus on Kent State Wrestling and the past. Let's compare how did Kent State Wrestling do this year for for the giving? Well, I'll throw a little bit of everything out. So, you know, we, we've been doing the, it, the crowdfunding campaign. is a huge campaign that our university does. It's a university-wide campaign. So it just isn't athletic departments. It's the business school. It's the communication school it's every school participates in this and the university keeps track of how much money you raise and how many unique donors you have a unique donor is anybody that gives more than 25 dollars. and like if i gave 10 if i gave you 10 different donations of 25 dollars, it only count as one because i'm one unique person so this year we had uh i don't know the exact number of unique donations but i want to say it was in the 500 area so we had more than 500 unique unique donations and we raised seventy thousand dollars, seventy-two thousand dollars after the the matching and the the things that go on with it. Um, last year we raised about fifty-five thousand dollars. The year before we were right around thirty-ish. The year before that we were right around twenty. And you know, back when there, there was a COVID year, a COVID year in there where we didn't do it. Um, but ultimately, it's something that you know the month of November is huge with with giving and, and donating and. And it's, it's big in a lot of different areas. At our school, it's the biggest time. And to be honest with you, it's my goal and also our athletic department's goal to always have the most unique donors and always to raise the most money, which we have out of the, the five or six years they've doing it, we've raised the most money each year. Probably, uh, I want to say three out of the six years and the other two, three years we were second. So we've either been second or number one. This year, we like I said, we raised $72,000. The next program was right around 40-ish, low 40s. So we almost doubled them. Um, and the way we do it is we just, we go out and we try to find unique donors as many as we can. So we're not trying to find one or two guys to give us a lot of money. We're going out and trying to get people to give $25 and become interested in Kent state wrestling. If you do, if you give $25 on a certain day, it doubles to turn into 50. Um, and if you do it on a certain, certain day, it doubles. And for every 25 unique donation of $25 or more, the university will match it by $500. So if you get 25 people to give $25, you're 
you get a five hundred dollar boost is what they call it. So gotcha. we try to maximize the doubling, the tripling, and also the the unique donor thing to get the boost. Um, like I said, we take a lot of pride in it. Anytime the university is involved in things like that, I do my best to make sure that uh, the university knows how strong the, the wrestling community is at Kent State Wrestling. And ultimately, we do, we, you know, everyone know everyone knows what Kent State Wrestling on our campus when um, when the, the crowdfunding starts and ends. We usually take over and, and we we monopolize the, the computer. It's always Kent State's always at the top of the list. When you give, you can go to the page and it literally lists all the different programs that are giving. And it starts with who, who has the most donations, who has the most unique donors. And we're always at the top of it. When it's all said and done with, the president comes out and gives a speech. And usually his response is, uh, Kent State Wrestling has dominated the, the, the crowdfunding campaign once again this year. You know, and he thanks everybody for doing it. But I, I, I like to thank all the, the wrestling people and also the people that, that just get involved because they know someone on the team. Like we have a lot of people that donate because they know Mikey Lowarchek from Wadsworth, which Wadsworth is a huge wrestling community. We have Mikey contact a lot of his people back there and we ask them to donate to him personally. So we, we end up getting people to donate for those reasons. That's kind of how we, we uh, more of a, we, we, we look for quantity, not quality. If that means, or it's quantity of people. We don't look for, four or five people to give a lot of money. We look for a lot of people to get involved in our program, to give a little bit of money. Yes. Your, your thing is volume. You want volume. You want volume. more people as opposed yep. to relying on the same five or 10 donors. Yes. hundred percent. All right. I love it. But it was a success. Huge success again. Did, did you win? We, we, like you said, the, the next, the next program below us had in the low forties, we were in the low seventies. So we almost okay. doubled the next I, I, you know, I wanted to start out with your guys' focus, and I didn't want you to call out this program or that program. You won. No, okay. You won. You won. Okay, that's all I want to know. It's our goal to win. It's our goal to praise the, to, you know, we, we have a goal that we try to get to, and then we try to make sure that any other program on camp, campus that we're winning, just like you said, to let everyone know how strong our program is with the people that will support wrestling. Yeah, I like it. Yep. We got, I think I got my donation in. I'm happy with my donation. I'm happy with what I did. Yep. Uh, I love being alum. I love it. I can't wait for uh, Friday. I didn't mean what I said, the mean stuff I said to you guys in that text message. Uh, but all those guys you mentioned, every one of them gave something. That's our that's our philosophy. Every one of those guys that we talked about on that on our little thread that we have, they all gave something. And yeah. everyone's situation is a little bit different. Nick Benchoy has got a lot of buy, buy a lot of clothes and a lot of you know, hair gel, hair, pro- to, to hair product, hair product, hair products, new clothing. We don't have to buy that much, so we can give a little more. That's all. Yeah, got to pay that heating bill at that house too. You got to heat that and house. You know, I think you got a pool house too in the back. I think. And you know, you know, he drives those big cars. You know, he's probably getting like twelve miles of the gallon. And some yeah, sort of I mean, you got to get the best one. And you got to be g'd out in the car. We know that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Listen, those Maple Heights guys go big. I like that. Good for those Maple guys. Yeah, you're, you're you're like an honorary Maple Heights guy. My dad was from Maple Heights. I I, I know. I I know. <laughs> That's listen. We got the Dubells over here. They're honorary Maple Heights. Well, I mean, the, uh, you know, Ricky Dubell won two state titles here at Kenston. He's our head coach. And then Ronnie was a state champ at Maple. And they're both involved in Kenston Wrestling or Bomber Wrestling yep. Club. So I like uh, you, you guys, you Maple Heights folks are, are interesting. And then, the, <laughs> then there's this kind of like the Garfield and the Maple guys are kind of merged. They're kind of like, kind of like one and the same type of dude. <laughs> um, they sound alike to me in my ears when I listen to them talk. Normally, they got about the same amount of hair product in too. I mean, there's a guy, Mike Bellamonte. Him and Joey D. Michelle sound like they have the same voice. Yep, and he, he's a maple guy. Joey's a yep. Joey's a maple. Uh, no, Joey no, D. Michelle is a Garfield. Guy. I'm telling you, Mike Bellamonte is a maple guy. A lot of Italians out in that area back in the day. There, there, there may be a fair amount of Italians that came from Maple Heights. I, I believe that that's a fair assessment, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen, you and I, I, I if, there, if, if nothing else, you don't listen to this podcast. To, to under, we could be talking about but the Mariana Trench. Uh, <laughs> we could be talking about the outer space, Jim. We could be talking about, you know, I've had an outer space interview, Jim. I interviewed uh, – Neil deGrasse Tyson and beat the streets one year. 
Yep, yep. So we can go. We can go the depths of the ocean. We can go to the the, the heavenly bodies. We can go to murder murder Tom, victims. Tom, Tommy Rollins, one of the greatest <laughs> humans that's out there. To David, no, yes. Hunter, a guy that will never see the day uh, light of day again. It is at least a roller coaster you got to enjoy with Kent State Wrestling Talk. Coach, do you have anything else for me? Bill Drypolch usually he'll you'll you'll post this. It'll be out probably by by the end of the day. I'll get a, a text tomorrow. Love your and Zem's conversations, but you go off on crazy, crazy, uh, crazy whims, and it's just who we are and what we do, right? People should hear our conversation when there's no camera on it. That's what they should hear. No, <laughs> no, no, they shouldn't. Never. They should never hear that. All right, Jim. Thank you for the time. I'm glad we were able to. Uh, uh, you dropped the call. Episode four is in the book. Stick around there real quick. Go.